Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, June 18th, 526 a.m. Central Time. Before we get started today, quick note, the markets are closed tomorrow in observance of the Juneteenth holiday. Juneteenth became a national holiday, also a bank holiday and a market holiday in 2021. So uh, we won't be on tomorrow. No emails, no videos from us for the premium subs. We'll be totally shut down. Back to business on Thursday. Uh, here on Tuesday morning, December corn futures are up two and a half at 465 and a half. November soybeans up three at 11.33 and a quarter. December Chicago wheat down two and a half at 6.28 and a half. December Kansas City wheat down three quarters of a cent at 6.33 and a half. December spring wheat down one and a half at 6.64 and a half. Let's start off with crop ratings. So U.S. corn conditions declined last week. The crop was rated 72% good to excellent nationally as of Sunday versus 74% last week. The rating was slightly below the trade expectation of 73%, but was the best for the week since 2018. States with a good to excellent rating of 75% or better include Missouri, Nebraska, Pennsylvania, and South Dakota. U.S. soybean conditions were reported at 70% good to excellent nationally as of Sunday compared to 72% the prior week. The rating fell below the trade expectation of 71%, but was the highest since 2020. Only 5% of the crop was rated very poor to poor. Here's the uh, seasonal chart of good to excellent corn ratings. And despite the drop, this is still the fourth best rating of the last 10 years, and we're still well above average. So yeah, we saw a drop. Um, is it the end of the world? No. One of your uh, big problems, or if there is a big problem, it's the state of Illinois. Illinois dropped from 74% good to excellent to 65% good to excellent in corn. That's a 9% drop in one week. In soybeans, Illinois dropped 8% from 69% down to 61% good to excellent. Illinois, I circled Illinois on the map here. We have some overseas subscribers. I know most of you guys know where Illinois is, but I circled it. A lot of so we have we have a lot of overseas people that maybe maybe aren't as as good at U.S. geography. But uh, Illinois is uh, in most years the number one. Uh, U.S. soybean producing state and the number two U.S. corn producing state. So it's a big deal. And you know what? You look at the forecast. So they've had very little rain over the last week and it's been hot. It's going to be hot for another week at least. And there's going to be very little rainfall for another week at least. So if you fast forward, are you going to see Illinois ratings and uh, maybe Indiana and Ohio are places like that going to drop uh, next week again? I think that's possible. Interestingly, the Indiana rating was unchanged for both corn and soybeans, but Ohio dropped. Ohio went from 75% good excellent in beans down to 70. In corn, they went from 80 down to 73. There were some changes elsewhere, but those are the areas that I think we need to watch. And, and those aren't the only areas we need to watch. I mean, I have I keep seeing comments. I'm getting texts and emails from people in Minnesota telling me, Joe, there's ponding, Joe, there's nitrogen loss. There's all sorts of problems up here. And uh, it's been excessively wet. You look at this map of just the last seven days, and yeah, a lot of areas caught three, four, five, six, seven inches of rain. And I think there was more locally and uh, they've got more rain coming. So you've got this divide here. I mean, half the corn belt's hot and dry and the other half is going to be cooler and um, wetter, I guess. Let's go to uh, wheat real quick. So uh, U.S. winter wheat harvest is ahead of schedule. The crop was 27% harvested nationally through Sunday versus 12% the prior week and 14% on average. The crop is 83% harvested down in Oklahoma, 63% in Texas, and 28% in Kansas. No progress has been reported in Colorado, Idaho, Michigan, Montana, Nebraska, Oregon, South Dakota, or Washington. Winter wheat conditions improved to 49% good to excellent versus 47% a week ago. Uh, the U.S. winter wheat crop was rated 76% good to excellent nationally compared to 72% last week. That's a really good spring wheat rating, 76% good to excellent. And that's being reflected in the market. Spring wheat futures have absolutely fallen apart. Uh, nothing to see with regard to winter wheat harvest. It's moving along pretty quickly. Let's jump to weather. The eastern U.S. Corn Belt is likely to remain hot and mostly dry for another week. The 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 day government maps favor odds of above normal temperatures through the end of June for the entire Corn Belt. The extended Euro and GFS models have shifted wetter and indicate that rain will return to the east by the middle part of next week. The shift toward a wetter pattern could have been the reason we saw weakness in the marketplace yesterday. So it looks nothing's ever guaranteed, but it looks very likely that the Corn Belt, this this set of maps on my screen here, if you guys are watching, this is the next five days. And it's very likely that Illinois, Missouri, and places further to the, to the east are going to see very little rain. And it's going to run uh, well above normal with regard to temperatures, 5 to 10, 15 degrees above normal. So the next five days looks 
it, it's safe to say that this is going to be accurate, sort of. Um, and then the Western Corn Belt, your Illinois, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and places further west are going to be wetter. This is where the uh, area of contention comes in is when you go out to the 28th. And the way that it's set up, these rains that you're seeing on, on this set of maps here, which is through the 28th, so this is through the next 10 days, these rains come back into the Eastern Corn Belt like Wednesday next week, Tuesday next week, middle part of next week, the way that it looks. The uh, GFS is notably wetter than the Euro model, which is still kind of stingy with the rains in the Eastern Corn Belt. It, it feels like if we're trading a weather market, the market is trading these, these extended uh, forecasts. And the extended stuff is always subject to change. I mean, you're talking a time frame five to 10 days out. It's, it's unpredictable. It's unreliable. You're going to see this stuff shift, you know, several times per day when these models update. So if this thing were to shift drier again for the Eastern corn belt in the extended period, I think that would be very friendly for the market, but it would appear to me as if the market uh, seems to believe that this extended stuff is accurate, because if you're only looking at the next five days and you're looking at hot and dry for half the corn belt, that's, that's a bullish forecast. Like I mentioned yesterday. So I suppose if they're trading weather, they're looking at the extended stuff. So if you guys have not checked out our premium content, you need to do so. You will not find content like this anywhere else. Can you tell me about yesterday's video, Joe? Pete was on yesterday. Uh, we talked about weather briefly, but we talked mainly about the crush expansion. What happened to the crush expansion? It is still happening. It's just that, you know, it was two years ago that we were told we're going to run out of soybeans. We're going to need all these soybean, extra soybean acres. We're just not going to be able to uh, fulfill the needs of these uh, renewable fuel manufacturers because we're going to, we're just not going to have the soybean oil. And it's, it's not happening. It's not happening at all. Why isn't it happening? And uh, what is is the um, project? What are the projections for the future? Pete is is an expert in renewables and biofuels, and uh, he talked about this with me yesterday. If you guys, oh, he's doing our uh, Pete. We're putting Pete to work. He's doing our pre-open weather updates on Sundays also, and uh, that's really great stuff all throughout the summer. If you guys want to see the premium stuff, go to standardgrain.com. Sign up this morning. If you sign up this morning, I will forward you a copy of this morning's email, which includes our six most recent premium videos, along with a whole bunch of other charts and graphics that uh, we don't show you here on YouTube. The premium sub is the best way to support what we're doing here. We don't make any money off the podcast. We make barely any money off YouTube. The only way we're able to, to get up and do this every day is through the premium subs. So check that deal out today, guys. Uh, no other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else, I promise. NOPA released May crush data on Monday. The U.S. soybean crush set a new record for the month last month when NOPA members processed 183.6 million bushels. The crush was up 8.4% from April and up 3.2% from May of last year. The crush also surpassed the average trade estimate of 178.4 million bushels. End of month soybean oil stocks in May declined to 1.7 billion pounds. Stocks fell below the average trade estimate of 1.8 billion pounds and were down 5.9% from the end of April and down 7.9% from year ago stocks. To get back to crush, crush, it, we are crushing more soybeans. We're going to crush a record amount of soybeans this year. We're probably going to crush a record amount of soybeans next year. It's just that the expansion and crush has been too slow it, it has not been enough to offset what we're losing in exports and also the large crops that we've had that's the problem uh usda revised lower its estimate for old crop crush uh in its most recent report and i think that may have been a premature adjustment i wouldn't be surprised if they had to come back up if you maintain or exceed this sort of pace through the last uh, few months of the marketing year here uh they may be too low with that crush number but it, it's it might be 20, 30 million bushels. It's probably not going to be enough to, to really move the needle in terms of the balance sheets, but it's it's not a bearish item, I don't think. Brazil's second corn crop is being harvested at its fastest pace in more than a decade. According to well-followed private group Ag Rural, the Safrina crop was 21% harvested as of last Thursday, up from 10% the prior week. During the same week last year, the crop was only 5% harvested. Harvest is moving at a brisk pace due to hot and dry conditions accelerating the drying of the crop. CONAB, Brazil's version of the USDA, is projecting the second corn crop to reach 88.1 million metric tons, down almost 14% from last season. CONAB did come up with its uh, full season or full year crop estimate for corn. They're at 114.1. USDA is at 122. So we've seen that gap narrow a little bit. It's a 7.9 million metric ton gap between the two entities. That's like 310 million bushels ballpark. So there is still a gap here. The yield reports have been good. I know it's been dry, but dryness is is uh, most often associated with that second corn crop. It's 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 grown during their drier season. They kind of rely on moisture 
from uh, prior months to, to get them through. So it, it looks all good to me. U.S. corn shipments declined marginally last week. USDA reported that 1.3 million metric tons of corn were inspected for export during the week ending June 13th. The print was down 4% from the previous week, but up 55% compared to the same week last year. Soybean shipments were up versus the prior week at 12 million bushels. Uh, the print was up 43% compared to the prior week and up 86% versus the same week last year. Wheat shipments increased slightly compared to the previous week at at 14 million bushels. The print was up 6.3% from the previous week and up 59% versus the same week last year. These shipment numbers were all toward the upper end of trade expectations. So um, this is all positive stuff. We still got a big soybean problem when it comes to exports, big picture. I've, I've mentioned, I sound like a broken record talking about the new crop book of sales being the worst in 20 years, but that's that's a big, big problem and a big time negative. What did cattle do yesterday? Uh, they were mixed. Feeders were down 65 cents to up 40 cents. Uh, live cattle were 37 cents lower to 22 cents higher. Box beef continued to climb higher on Monday. Choice end of the day at 320.47, that was up 58 cents. Select end of the day at 304.82, that was up $1 and one cent. Outside markets, US dollars up a little bit. Stocks are mixed. I believe the S&P posted another fresh all-time high yesterday. Um, the bonds are off just a little bit. Crude oil is down 12 cents in the August WTI at 79.60. Have a great day, guys. We're off tomorrow. We'll talk to you on Thursday.